right, and welcome back to another segment here on GEMS Podcast. With me today is a special guest by the name of Summer A. Roberts. And let me tell you a little bit more about Summer. So Summer is the CEO of Impact Partners Financial, a native of Biloxi, Mississippi. Summer received a bachelor's degree from Southern Methodist University. After graduating, she embarked on her professional career, initially securing an internship for the former White House Director of Public Relations. Her performance became a springboard for her to become a successful recruiter in New Orleans. Summer desires to help others um, lead to join the family business well, which led her to join the family business. Sorry about that, y'all, my faux pas. And her career took off as CEO of Roberts Wealth Management. She has a rich family history of financial advisors. It's in her DNA. Summer continues to to advance in her field by always striving to demonstrate excellence and impact her clients. Summer is highly involved in the community she serves, donating her time to nonprofit organizations like Make-A-Wish Foundation, Anchor Point, Bay Area, Turning Point, MomKind, Bay Area Pet Adoptions, and Junior Achievement. She is a proud board member and treasurer of the prestigious Galloway School in Friendswood. Summer believes what sets her apart from other financial advisors is her innate burning desire to leave the world better than how she found it. She goes beyond the new the numbers and truly cares for the people and families' lives she impacts every day. It's no coincidence her latest business venture has impact in its name. So without further ado, let's welcome the woman behind it all, Summer A. Roberts, to GEMS Podcast. Hi, so glad to be here. <laughs> Welcome, Summer. I'm super excited to chat with you. And I did read your long bio because a short one will be posted in the show notes. So I definitely want to give the audience a chance to connect with you in a fun and personal way before we dive in to the meat of the conversation, which, which is going to be focused around how to really get ahead of that financial curve in a volatile market and just really take you know, the money that we have, turn it into tax-free while the market is down so you can have that tax-free income <laughs> afterwards. So I want to um, have you pick out of these two options for your fun game. We could either do a icebreaker or we could do a rapid fire 10 question game. What are you in the mood for? Ooh, they both sound exciting. <laughs> Um, oh, I don't know. Let's go for the rapid fire questions. Okie dokie. We're playing rapid fire with Summer and Genesis. Do, 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 do. Question number one. You're a Southern girl like myself, or some people may say a Southern belle. What is your favorite Southern dish? Oh, oh gosh. That's a loaded question. <laughs> All of them. Oh man. So, you know, my favorite food is tacos, but that's not a Southern dish. Um, we'll have to go with just good old shepherd's pie. Ooh. Go yes. <laughs> Question two, coffee, tea, or neither? Oh, I, I live, eat and breathe coffee, but I do love tea. Question three, if you could be a fly on the wall and eavesdrop on any conversation, whether past or present, what are you listening into? Oh, man. A fly on the wall, any conversation. Yes. Oh, I mean, I could name like 30. <laughs> um. You know, I, I've always been obsessed with uh, the British monarchy, so I'd love to be a fly on the wall within the castle walls. Ooh, just okay. Just kind of inner workings. That would be super cool, just to kind of hear, like, what are they really talking about? Like, what goes on <laughs> that's not put out in the media? <laughs> yeah. 
Question four, if you could have lunch or dinner with any person past or present, who would you be partaking a meal with? Oh, well, probably, probably past, I would say um, some, uh, a president of some sort, Abe Lincoln, um, Reagan, someone like that. Question five, what's your favorite color? Uh, teal. Okay. <laughs> question, <laughs> question six, Apple, Android, or hybrid? Apple. <laughs> question, <laughs> question seven, if you could have any superpower summer, what would it be? Uh, you know, um, I'm a mom of single mom of three kids. So um, I'm going to go with like, I say this often, I wish I had a third arm. <laughs> Question eight, if you could recreate a significant moment in your life, what would it be? Oh, goodness. I mean, recreate, not necessarily change it, just do it again. Yeah, you can either recreate it or I'll give you the ability to change it. That could be fun too. Okay. Um, I, I guess I, it would have to be when my, my first child was born. It was magical. Oh, question eight. No, question nine. Sorry. Okay. Here's a good one. So you just won the lottery, right, Summer? And you were so excited to just put some of that money away. To, and you, ha you had plans. You're like, if I ever win the lottery, I would do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And there's a kicker. They said, well, Summer, before we could release the rest of your proceeds to you, you must donate to three charities of your choice first. So what charities are you contributing to? Oh, well, I would definitely contribute to uh, my church, my local church. Um, I'd also contribute to the um, a, a school, a private school particularly probably the one my kids go to. Um, and, and there's a few nonprofits I'm involved in that cater to um, women and children. So, so that would be my focus. Amazing. And question 10, this is going to be a fun one. <laughs> so it's our pass or play question summer. So if you choose to pass, our roles are reversed and you get to ask me a question. If you choose to play, I ask one last question to wrap up rapid fire. So do you want to pass or play? Oh, I think I'll pass. Okie dokie. What is your question? What motivates you daily? Oh, man. Okay, so definitely right now, my family. And then for what I'm doing now in the podcast, definitely, you know, my dad, like I started this um, podcast after he passed to away due to medical negligence in November of 2020. And he was a big part of my life. And just to see my dad connect with so many different people and just be that wild card um, opposite of my mom, I think that it's a good way to keep his memory alive. And a lot of my beginning episodes was talking about the grief journey that I had after my dad passed away. Wow, that's a, that's a big motivation. Yeah. So thank you for playing rapid fire summer. And I want to segue into your beat, your sauce that makes summer like just so interesting because you're helping so many people by helping them with financial literacy, financial planning, and all the incredible things that you do. And we've all known like the pandemic has really rocked the financial space in a sense. And so one, one of the things that you're focusing on right now is really helping people get ahead of the curve while the market is down to really help them, you know, look at ways that they can, you know, convert some of that money to tax-free money. So whenever the market does go back up, they don't have to pay taxes on that money. But before you got into what you're doing now, give us a little background about the financial um, industry, because I think 
by not having financial literacy, we're not doing ourselves any justice because you definitely have to plan for the future and be wise with the money that you do have because we've all seen from the pandemic that these jobs are not as secure as they used to be. And there were so many people that were laid off in the pandemic and you know it really affected their households. Yeah, so I mean, if the pandemic didn't, teach us anything the one thing it taught us is that um you know you you have to be prepared for anything right at any time who would have ever thought we would be in that position ever in a million years um and, and that's what makes planning so important and it doesn't matter how young or how old you are it's it's never ever too late to have an actual financial plan in place we actually, my, my whole team volunteers for a nonprofit called Junior Achievement that um, teaches financial literacy to uh, students in, in middle school. Uh, we've taught as low as elementary school students. So, um, you know, it, it's it, the pandemic mostly just reiterated the fact that you have to have some kind of plan in place. And we all should plan for the best, plan for the worst, but expect the best, right? Um, but you have to have a plan, most importantly. And so some people, whenever you think about planning, sometimes it scares them because they feel like, oh, I can't really go to a financial planner because I don't, or a financial advisor because I don't have, you know, enough money set aside. But what money do you have set aside and what can you part with whenever you're making a list of your wants versus need? Do you really need that Starbucks coffee every day? Do you really need to eat out every day? Can you just take that money that you have that you're spending over in X, Y, and Z and put it in another vehicle and allow your money to work for you? So I feel like sometimes you have to understand what your priorities are and really decipher between something that is a want versus a need so you could be in a great financial situation and sometimes all it is is just shifting your mindset and thinking about you know the end in mind and reverse engineering it to take the actions that you need today so I want to spend some time um talking about maybe just finance finance planning in the beginning and what are the steps you take when you're working with a new client so yeah, I love Stephen Covey. <laughs> Begin with the end in mind, right? Um, so a really good rule of thumb is to set aside at least 20% of what you're bringing in. I know it sounds, sounds pretty big, but if, if you're working in a place that has some type of retirement plan, that that's an amazing option because it's out of sight, out of mind. You don't even see that money goes into your retirement plan before you ever even get it. Um, so that's really great. If you can't do that or you don't work at a company that has a plan, you can set up your own plan to do that. Where, And I've done that with, with plenty of clients and their children and grandchildren where we'll set up a plan that if they get paid on the 15th, Fifteenth, um, we've got automated EFTs going out on the fifteenth um, to get that money transferred. So it's always really good um, to get it out of there as quickly as you can. Um, but you have to sit down and 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 write down your your wants versus your needs. You, it's critical to any financial plan. And then if you do that, you're not going to be stuck in a situation, um, an unexpected situation like the pandemic. Um, you could be there, but you could at least have a little bit of a nest egg set aside to, to help you out, so. Yes, absolutely. And you just taught me something new because I always thought it was 10% because they say you take 10% off. And for those who are religious or spiritual, you pay your church or your local 
charity or wherever you contribute, then 10% goes into savings. So then that shaves off that 20% there. Then the rest of it is what you live off of to pay your bills and et cetera. But then I like your approach where you say take 20% off of top and then live on the other 80 because that's going to also help you steward it. And then you mentioned accessing what your company is already providing for those who are in the employee bucket. So that's either your 401k. So if your company is contributing 4% uh, as a match, make sure you put in 4%. Because sometimes if you put in 5%, the company is still only going to match 4%. So if you want to contribute another 1%, you could do it in your own form of savings. And I know some people do an IRA Roth or et cetera, but there are certain um, saving buckets that do have um, monetary caps on them. So can you talk about the different monetary caps? Because sometimes I feel like those caps can actually um, hinder, hinder somebody because they're like, okay, I have X amount of money. I've contributed over here. Now I can't contribute anymore. And then so they're looking for another vehicle to really make sure that they're diversifying that. And feel free to rephrase the, the question, Summer, because I'm definitely not an expert in this area like you are. Sure. No, I I understand. So, so basically, when you're contributing to some type of IRS regulated retirement plans, there there are caps on how much each year you can contribute, um, and and every plan is different and they change annually. Um, and there are different, it depends on your age too. So if you're 50 or older, there's a little bit more you can contribute. It's called a catch-up provision. Um, if you're under 50, it's a little bit less. So all the plans are completely different. I don't, I don't think that you want me to go through them all, but I'm happy to provide a sheet um, that you can share that has those current, this calendar year caps. Um, so really the question is, once you've like hit that cap, what are some alternatives? Um, so you always want to keep taxes in mind as, as well. The, the good thing about contributing to a traditional retirement plan is that you are deferring paying those taxes till later. Um, the downside is, is that later taxes could be higher um, and so as you're pulling your money out, you may actually be paying more taxes later down the road. So a lot of people talk about investing diversification, but what a lot of advisors don't talk about is, is tax diversification. So when you're saving and you're putting money away, you need to also keep in mind that you need to have tax diversification as well. If you have a 401k or an IRA with your company, that's tax deferred money. You're not gonna pay taxes on it now, but somewhere down the line you will. Um, so what you wanna potentially look at is looking at some tax-free options. Um, so that would be a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA, different options like that. Those also have caps on how much you can contribute. So the IRS puts limits on how much you can put into those each year as well. And they actually have income threshold caps too. So if your income is really high, you're not able to contribute to a Roth IRA. So there's a lot of limitations, but with that said, there are some alternative hybrid type of investments that you can achieve the same idea without the IRA rest limitations. So there are some advanced strategies that we've used for many years and um, that a lot of people don't really talk about that act like a Roth. So you put your money in, you pay tax now, and then it grows tax-free. So you never pay tax again. Um, but there are not limitations with some of these alternatives. So just know that there are alternatives. You need to work with a financial group or a financial advisor that knows and understands that there's not just one size fits all. Um, there are some alternative options out there. So 
And thank you for sharing that, Summer. And I just know from experience, this is what I've heard, some alternative options. Some are now using life insurances as some of those alternative options. Annuities, which is something that I learned about. So if the market dips, you're not losing any money. Your market is still growing. And then if you look at the trend line in the market analysis, some of the trends with the annuity versus like just putting your money in the actual stock market, whenever the, um, the stock market dips, your money is not dipping in annuity and it's growing. And then if you look at when, when you invested in the stock market, market versus when you in, invested in the annuity, you can look at the trend lines to see, okay, this is how much my money was making in annuity. So it was that um, positive upward slope. And then with the stock market, it was like you were going up, then it dipped, then you were going up and et cetera. So those are two other alternative vehicles that I've learned about. Um, I know, I know with the life, with the life insurance, there's two different buckets there. There's long-term life insurance, and then there's um, the short term. I think I'm actually butchering the different terminology, but there are two different buckets with life insurance. And some of the life insurance, you could take money out and not be penalized for it. And then there's also some that give you that cash flow option. So I always tell people, just being a millennial, just really do your due diligence. Um, no question is, is stupid and just really get ahead of the curve. But the next part of the conversation, Summer, I know you're helping people just really get ahead of the curve in this volatile market. So what are, what are some of the things that you're doing? And earlier I alluded to that tax-free. Yeah, so, I mean, clearly this year we've seen a very volatile market. <laughs> Um, our, our philosophy at our firm is always that there, no matter what the markets are doing, no matter what the economy is doing, there's always opportunity somewhere. Um, and so we don't just, you know, sit on our laurels and say, oh, well, it's a bad market. Um, we are always looking and searching for various opportunities with our clients. And so a couple of those opportunities in, in the current status of the market is, well, number one, um, tactical active investing, I think, is more important in this type of market than ever before. Um, so that basically just means that it's, it's an active account that is moving constantly, looking for opportunities, hiding when it's bad, right? We're not afraid to go to cash if we have to, to hide and, and ride out the storm and then look for opportunities. Um, it's not a buy and hold investment strategy. It's a very active investing strategy. So I think in a, in a market like we're seeing this year, active management is, is more important than ever. You can, you can sit there and you can ride it out, sure. One thing we know for sure is that markets will go up and markets will go down, we know that. <laughs> the, um, the, the question behind it is, do you, do you want to ride it out? Do you want to just see your money and ebb and flow with the market? Or do you want to see it actively managed to where you can kind of limit a little bit of that downside um, and then look for opportunities on the upside. So tactical management is really critical during times like right now. And the other opportunity that we've been looking at basically all year is uh, doing Roth conversions. Like you said, doing tax conversions. Um, what that basically means is if you have a, an IRA or some type of um, tax deferred account, a 401k IRA, something like that, Remember, you still have never paid taxes on that money. So later down the road, remember, you will pay taxes and we don't know it, what the tax brackets will be in the future. Um, especially, you know, people in our generation, because who knows when we retire, what taxes are going to be. It's, it's, it could be drastically different. So we can either pay taxes now where we you know exactly what they are, or we can pay them later where we really have no idea what taxes are gonna be. So taking opportunity, if, if your account was up and it's now down, doing some type of tax conversion while it's down, let's just say you're, I'm gonna 
make up fictitious numbers here. They're totally made up. What if $100,000 is now worth 70,000? Well, you can do a, a Roth conversion or some type of tax conversion on that 70,000, pay taxes on the 70, and then and when it does recover and it starts going back up, at that point, it's tax-free. So there's a really good opportunity there, especially right now in, in our, our current tax bracket. So that's a great opportunity. <laughs> yes, because, oh my gosh, people are probably like scratching their head whenever they have to pay that higher tax. But if they would have been privy and know the knowledge up front where they could just pay their taxes now and alleviate paying higher taxes, they would have, you know, 100% jumped on that bandwagon if they were a smart kicky. And now, Summer, before we jump into the CTA, is there any question or anything else you want to add to the conversation that I may not have asked that would be a great value add for the audience? Um, I think the most important thing, the most important message I want to get across is um, you need to have a plan and you need to... We have, there's a lot of different advisors out there. There's a lot of different organizations that are available to help you. Um, we have always been an independent organization. And the reason that we've chosen to go that way is because we don't, we have the unique ability to do what's in our client's best interest. They are, they are who we answer to, you know, them and the regulators. And um, there's not a company telling us what's best for our clients, right? And because we're independent, we are able to have any and every tool you can think of, any financial tool at our disposal to help people. So in, in my opinion, that just puts us in a really, really unique position to be able to put the client's needs above all else. Um, and I think that's a really important message to get out there because some people don't understand that there are different types of advisors. Not that anyone is any better. Um, they're, we're all just different. Um, and, and in my personal quest, I want to make sure that I am always putting my client before anything and anyone else. And so being independent allows me the ability to do that. I'm not married to any one company. I'm, I work with a ton of companies. Um, it's, it's whatever is best for my client is what matters. But the message here is, you know, do your due diligence, find somebody that's willing to listen to you. Doesn't just talk over your head and tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing. You want to know what you should or shouldn't be doing, but you also want to work with somebody who takes the time to get to know you um, and really understand you, your family, your goals, what's really important to you. And then once they understand that, then they can start to help you build a plan. Yes, and thank you so much, Summer, for sharing that value add there. And now let's jump into the call to action. What is your call to action for our audience besides, you know, having a plan, doing your due diligence, and really ensuring that you are finding a financial advisor that works for you, your lifestyle, and really understands you because it is a partnership whenever we're talking about finances. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it with the word partner. You, you have to work together um, because life changes as we learned from the pandemic, right? Very fast. So um, the, the call to action that I think would benefit people the most is, you know, we are happy to do a, a 30 minute discovery visit with anyone who wants to chat about what they need to do or any advice that we can give. Basically, we have a discovery visit where we just learn a lot about you um, and, and see if, if we can give you some advice or if we, can, if we can give you one little nugget of information that can change your financial future, then, then that's worth 30 minutes on the phone or on a Zoom or face-to-face, -face. it doesn't matter. We're 
we're in Houston. So if you're in this area, we're happy to meet you face to face. But um, and, and then based on that discovery visit, you know, we can also provide we do analysis reports um, that we can provide to people we would do. Um, if they're already currently invested, we could do a second opinion. We could run a risk analysis on their current portfolio to make sure that their current risk situation matches up with their comfort level. Um, they may think they're at a certain risk level and they may not realize where they are. So they may just kind of need to have that report to have a baseline to understand where they are. Um, and then also we, we run tax analysis reports as well. So looking at is a, a, some type of tax conversion beneficial to you? And if so, what's it gonna cost you? And all of that stuff, because it's not necessarily right for everyone. So we really need to run that report to make sure that it's in the best interest. So, you know, just because we've talked about tax conversions here, don't please don't run out and start converting stuff. You, you have to have an analysis done. Um, talk to a CPA, an accountant, a, a, a certified financial advisor, somebody who is licensed to be able to sit down and run these analysis and reports for you. But um, if, if you wanna reach out to us, we are more than happy to do so as well. So amazing. And, and Summer, how can they reach you and your team? What is your website and where do you primarily hang out on social media? Oh, well, our website is impactpartnersfinancial.com impactpartnersfinancial.com. Go to our website. There's a lot of information there that you can, you can do some due diligence. You can read some really good articles and blogs and stuff like that. Um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and basically you name it. We're probably there. Just look up impactpartnersfinancial.com. Um, or you can always just call our office. Our, our office phone number is 281-549-6515. And there you have it, listeners and viewers. You just heard Summer A. Roberts, and she gave you a lot of gems based on the financial industry that she is in. Make sure you do your due diligence, prepare for the future because you definitely don't want to get left behind or caught up in all of the chaos because you didn't take time to do your homework, do your due diligence, and really just have a conversation with someone who is already a subject matter expert in the field. So definitely tap in with Impact Partners Financial. All of her contact information will be in the show notes. For those of you um, that are interested, just reach out. All it takes is just a question. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're on 40 plus platforms. You could also see the video to this recording by going to our YouTube channel, which is at Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank each one of you for continuing to support the guests that I bring on, as well as the mission behind the podcast, which is to bring you content that is educational, inspirational, and motivational while we weave in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. So until we have the next guest on, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day.